Hello all, welcome to this brand new course on Pentester Academy. Now this course is titled Hacker Project SMS Controlled Pentest Bot. Now you're probably thinking what is a hacker project? Now what I have seen in all of these years of research, training and talking to people is many a times you know we look at different domains uh, let's say network pen testing, web pen testing, embedded device security, etc. And there is a lot of scope where we can combine our learnings across these domains and you know create something new which can aid in let's say automation, research, uh, or I mean you know sometimes just for fun. <laughs> so hacker projects is really going to go ahead and touch upon you know many of these possibilities where we try and see how we can create interesting new things uh, you know, out of everyday problems we as pen testers, red blue teamers are already encountering and solving. So this very first hacker project is actually going to be an SMS controlled pen test bot. So let's jump right in and understand what this is. Uh, just a brief introduction about myself. I'm Vivek, the founder of Pentester Academy. I've been a researcher, um, you know, security practitioner, and a product developer, you know, well over a decade. Uh, spoken at DEF CON, trained at Black Hat, many other places. And in this video, what we are going to look at is, uh, you know, the course introduction and the hardware and software requirements. Okay, so. SMS control pen test bot, what is the objective? Now in this extremely short course, we are going to try and see if we can create an embedded IoT device for pen testing purposes. Now in later hacker projects, I will show you how to extend this so that you can communicate over the internet using API endpoints, etc. For this video, we will actually focus completely on SMS-based control. Now, why is SMS-based control so interesting? Now, the best part, of course, is by using any form of cellular network, uh, we really don't require our pen testing device to be connected to the internet or uh, you know, have any form of connectivity for that matter. Now, there are other use cases as well. So let's say you've created your own pen test device or gadget or bot and you've deployed it on a remote network. And typically this is supposed to connect back to you or you know some other form of remote access over the internet is available so that you know you can go ahead, log in, run commands, do maintenance, etc. So but what happens if all of a sudden your bot or device doesn't connect to you? right? Is there something wrong with the device? Is there something wrong, you know, with the local network where it has been deployed, etc. Now, this is really where having an extra channel uh, over cellular can come in really very handy. And of course, you know, cellular does solve one big problem, which is, uh, you know, it kind of ensures that no matter where you are, you know, anytime, anywhere in the world, you could pretty much go ahead and access your device without having to uh, really worry about connecting to the internet in any way. So having said that, and when we say automation, there are many, many use cases possible. Now in this specific hacker project, we are going to be looking at a very simple Nmap scan automation. So what we do is we SMS the bot an IP address and a set of port numbers, the bot automatically does the scan, sends us back the results over SMS. Now, the way I've written the code, you can trivially extend this to work with you know, any other tool on your system. And ideally, that is what you would probably want to do after finishing this course. Now, one of the other things I've done you know, as, a, as a trainer for all of these years, uh, I've kind of made the whole design functionality, everything extremely minimalistic and more of provided you with a skeleton or a framework of how you could go ahead and add more and more things, right? This ensures, first of all, that, you know, the code, the whole project doesn't get overly complicated. Uh, so that's something we've really taken care of. Okay. 
So of course, you know, we are talking cellular and you know embedded device and whatnot, which means there are going to be some hardware requirements. So what are the hardware requirements? Now, we could of course try to run a lot of these things on a computer, but I would actually prefer if you know we could go ahead and use a Raspberry Pi for this project. Now you could use the Pi Zero or any other small embedded device but I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, for this project. Now, apart from that, we are going to be requiring, you know, some kind of a cellular modem. So I'm going to be using hologram.io's Nova dongle, which is available for around $49. And of course, if you want to connect to a cellular network, then you are going to require some kind of a SIM card. So I'm again going to be using hologram.io's IoT SIM card. Now, why these specific hardwares and why this selection is something I'm going to justify in the next couple of slides. But go ahead, you know, you can you can check these devices out and I think in total you should be able to purchase everything in under $100. Uh, forgot to mention of course you require the micro SD card for the Pi. Okay. So let's look at defending our choices. So why the Raspberry Pi? Uh, now I've done a variety of hacker projects probably over the last you know, 10, 15 years of working in security and technology for that matter. Now typically what I actually find is that you know, we end up creating these little projects inside a VM, you know, we do stuff, but of course you know, life happens and we, we go on to the next thing, right? And many a times you create something, you know, you enjoy that moment, but you've created it already, which means, you know, you move on to the next project. So this is really where what I found was by dedicating a Raspberry Pi setup to every project I do, in a way I'm kind of going ahead and countering the project discard syndrome, as I kind of call it, right? This just ensures that, you know, on my rack, I can see that Raspberry Pi with a little label on it, reminding me of some interesting project which I did, and to see if I can anytime go back to it, improvise it, do something better. Uh, so this, at least to me, is important. I've talked to a lot of people in the security community, and they seem to kind of, you know, share the same feeling. So that's the reason why I, I wanted a dedicated, cost-effective, completely self-contained device where I could put everything in rather than running yet another virtual machine. Now, because all the code for this project is really just Python uh, with no specific lock-in for the platform, it's portable. So if you, if you really want, well, you could go ahead and even try to run this in a VM uh, I'm going to be using Raspberry Pi's operating system, but hey, you can virtualize that as well, uh, you know, using QMU or, or, or something else. Uh, the other thing which I found was very interesting, at least to me, was by using a Raspberry Pi and the SD card, once I typically, you know, create the project and freeze it, uh, it's always easy for me just to quickly take that card out, image it out, and push it into you know, long-term storage on Amazon S3 or some other place so that in a way I've created a backup. Uh, so for me at least it was kind of uh, a no-brainer. Okay, so the next choice of course is the actual cellular modem. Now there are many, many choices available for this. Uh, but why did I choose Nova? Now, first of all, NOAA internally uses uh, the U-Block SARA U201, and people familiar with modems know that you know U-Block produces probably one of the best modems out there, very, very stable, very predictable, works very well. Along with that, you know, hologram.io, uh, you know, uh, they've done a lot of testing on this specific device, and they've made sure that this kind of predictably works. We found it to work during our tests as well without any problems. Uh, and that is again, once again, reassuring because when I do a hacker project, I, I really am not in a mood to kind of go ahead and do hardware debugging unless this is actually a hardware project, right? Uh, at the very same time, hologram.io has 
provided a very easy to use Python API. And you can use the cloud dashboard, which they provide to look at logs, diagnostic, what the device is sending, etc., which makes it very, very easy to work with it. Now, additionally, this Nova uBlocks device can work with you know, 2G, GPRS, 3G, 4G, etc., thus giving us a wide variety of choices no matter where we are. Finally, the SIM card. Now, this is the most painful part of actually dealing with uh, you know, creating any form of embedded IoT device or any device which you want uh, you know, to connect over cellular. Now, the biggest pain point if you ever try to do this is to get a cellular coverage where you, know, you aren't going ahead and you know, taking an AT&T or a T-Mobile SIM which has a contract uh, and then you have to go and try to figure out what is the best possible contract and what is the termination clause and all of that painful part. Now, hologram.io takes away all of that headache. Uh, there are no carrier contracts. You, know, you can just get this SIM activate it on their website in under a minute and get started. They take care of all the coverage in, I think, literally every other country in the world from what I've seen on their online website. Uh, so this sim actually provides you global coverage and you might not immediately realize the significance of this, but if you really created a, a great hacker project, you could pretty much ship your device with this SIM to anywhere in the world and it would just work, right? Which is fantastic. Uh, they also provide a free developer quota, which is good because you can start get started without having to pay anything. Uh, and you can assign an actual mobile number to this SIM so that you can even send incoming messages, etc., to your mobile device which is what we're going to do uh, you know, as part of this hacker project. So before I move on, let me actually show you all of these devices. There we are, I've hooked up an extra camera. So of course, uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know that this is a Raspberry Pi and uh, something you can easily purchase. So I'm gonna leave it on the side. Now, a lot of people actually like to purchase cases. I'm a sucker for you know good quality cases. So so here is you know a wooden case which I've kind of purchased. Uh, looks really good. And while we are on it, I can show you some of my other <laughs> case collections as well. So uh, the best way is you know just go on Amazon.com. You know. Just search around, look at which case actually looks good. Uh, and you could probably order a couple of these and then decide which one works for you. A word of caution with cases, not all cases are kind of created equal. So, you know, some of the case creators have made sure that as far as putting in the SD card and all that is concerned, it's comfortable, while others haven't. So it's a bit of a trial and error before you finally, you know, find that dream case which really works for you. Uh, but again, I'd recommend buying a case uh, just so that again, you know, anything inside a case, at least in, in, in to my eyes, makes it look more beautiful. So I really don't want to dismantle it later. Just want to label it and keep it on the side. Okay, so here is the uBlocks based modem. This is the Nova. As you can see, there is a place here to put the SIM card in. Uh, this is the GSM antenna right here. And they also provide this little plastic case so that you can put the modem inside of this and take it around without worrying uh, that you might go ahead and destroy this circuit or this might you know, hit the side of a table or some corner and, and any of these components might come off. Now, having said that, you know, you could buy any 2G, 3G cellular modem. The only painful part is that then you would have to look at how to interface with that modem and make sure everything works. 
I think it may be trivial to go ahead and hack the hologram Python API to work with pretty much any other modem, but I haven't tried it. In one of the next hacker projects, which I'm planning, which is hardware implants, uh, I will actually show you how to interface with a modem. Now, having said that, there are other options, of course, uh, depending on the project. If you just want to use this for SMS, then you can even use something like a SIM 900 or a SIM 800 unit. And again, in a later project, you're going to use this. Here is a SIM 900, which can be used. And a variety of other choices. But I'm going to stick to U-Blocks, even though it might look a little bit marginally more expensive. Uh, I think it's kind of worth it just because it makes it so easy and predictable to get started. Now, of course, you have the micro SD card here. And if your computer does not have an SD card reader, you can always buy one of these Anchor or any other manufacturer's SD card readers. Uh, now, I like to use the Raspberry Pi, but there are other options. So one of the little gadgets I'm slowly kind of falling in love with is the Orange Pi. It's a really small, I'll just kind of put it side by side to the Raspberry Pi, kind of see how small it is. Uh, a lot of people hate it, <laughs> primarily because, uh, you know, the software support isn't that great, but I've actually found that it's not that difficult to uh, go ahead, install the software and get started with it. But again, you know, uh, there are options. I'm going to still stick with the Raspberry Pi simply because it's easy to procure. Many of you already might have experience working with it. So, hey, you know, kind of why not? Uh, let's go back to our slides. Okay. Now for the software requirements, let's actually go here. So we will be using Raspbian and you can go to the Raspberry Pi website, go to the download section, you should find it. Now I actually want to go ahead and operate our hacker gadget, uh, you know, in a headless mode. So I'm going to go ahead and install the Raspbian stretch light and we'll go through the process of installation in the next video. But just so that you know, that's really what we are going to use. The Raspbian stretch with desktop, of course, has the desktop. It's a little bit more bulkier. Uh, and hence, I'm just going to go with a very minimalistic Debian stretch image, which is compatible with the Pi. Now, a couple of other links, as I said, U-Blocks. That's actually uh, internally the modem used by the Nova. Uh, they have a ton of products. Which, which you can check out and you may find interesting. And then finally, to purchase these products, you can go to hologram.io and under platform, you'll actually find the Nova here, which you can purchase, talks about um, a lot of interesting stuff in here, gives you some understanding of where all this would work then finally is the IoT SIM, which again, you can purchase from here as well, right? Fantastic. So if you notice, almost most of the world is covered. They've broken it down into zone one and zone two. Uh, in North America, we are here in zone one and zone two is all the purple colored places. Cool. Now, apart from this, we'll be using hologram.io's Python library and a couple of other supporting Python libraries. Uh, we'll come to how to install these in the later video after we install Raspbian. Okay, so that is all I had in mind for this video. Hopefully, you are just as excited as I am about this hacker project and see you in the next video. Thank you.